Oxen Park. Yes, this is where we're going to take the Navara. And a bit of green laning. Welcome to the Lake District. Good afternoon and welcome to Review with a Brew, off-road edition, and actually end of an era edition at that. Pickups have been a staple on UK roads for many years, and the Nissan Navara has been here as long as I can remember, to be honest. And that makes it so sad that it's coming to the end of an era. They're literally stopping production of the Navara. I'm gutted, I really am. It's dependable, it's powerful, it's torquey, it looks apart. And believe it or not, we actually had one of these on review a few years ago. So what I'm gonna do is just have a wander around and say, well, essentially nothing has changed. And I mean nothing. Even on the Sportline FK8, they changed things like this. But on this, no, it's exactly the same. But to be honest, the market it's going for, it doesn't really need to change. It's damn good off-road. And that's the primary thing about a pickup. Four-wheel drive, practicality, functionality, and heated seats. Well, in winter anyway. We've got an automatic gearbox. Yes, that's not always everybody's cup of tea when it comes to pickups. But we do have an old-school handbrake and 2.3-litre turbocharged diesel lump. Let's get exploring. By the way, I'm in full high. Been some heavy rain might cause some wheel spin. Not to worry, the Navarra can cope. I always thought the Navarra would be a capable off-roader, but I'd never managed to get behind the wheel to find out. It's short-footed, easy to engage 4x4. I'm in 4 high right now, which can be engaged on the fly, and it's coping well, even on road tyres. It bounces all over the shop on big rocks, but that's what you expect from a ladder on frame chassis. I've also had some wheel spin, again, to be expected. Didn't need to engage four low, but just knowing I have it there if I need it is brilliant. Now, roof bars on vehicles are a bit of a bone of contention. They're not really that strong. You can actually carry 100 kilos on that. But look at this. Clearance between the wheel and the arch. It's just sturdy, it's strong. Decent ground clearance. And there's lots of shielding under there as well. Because believe me when I say that we've been belting some feral rocks. It's amazing how basic a pickup is. So, ladder frame or otherwise known as body on frame chassis. Spare wheel here as well. I do love a good 4x4. We'll really miss it. Thank you, Navara. You've done farmers, arboriculturists, construction workers work for so long and it's just going to be gutting to know that well essentially pickups are going to disappear off UK roads because they're primarily run on diesel yes the big bad boogie man it'll be interesting to see what this next range of electric pickups is I mean Subaru have started using it in things like the XV just a mild hybrid system to assist Jeep as well thing about the Navara is it's not just for off-roading either. When we did the review last time we took it all the way to Goodwood from here. That's about 600 mile round trip and we were still getting about 30 to the gallon which I think is absolutely amazing for a pickup with 200 brake. Well 190 but who counts 10? Well I certainly picked the right attire. Uh, maybe not the orange shoes but that's a staple of Planet Auto. Decent ride height, keyless entry, 
and we've even got a step as well. One thing that is missing, and you do have it on the passenger side, is a handle for getting in here. Why you'd leave that out is beyond me. And watching Annabelle get in is a bit of a challenge. Hard plastics pretty much everywhere. We do have a nice padded area here and some blue stitching. Decent door card. A look, electric seats as well. Climbing in is nice and easy for me. I can just literally step in. But the step really helps Annabelle. It's comfortable, nice clear cluster, and yep, yeah, everything is pretty solid. Hard plastic throughout, and a little bit of flex in the center console. But that kind of makes sense. When you're off-roading, the poor thing's gonna be put through some serious hardship, shall we say. Leather wrapped steering wheel, automatic gearbox, old school handbrake, and get this, we've got heated seats. Oh look, sunroof, fully electric. These are pretty teched up, especially when you go for a trim like the Enguard. For a start, I've got an electric seat, and both are heated as well. Integrated infotainment screen, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, yada, yada, yada. Set some of the car's settings. Nice and clear, and also, it's got satellite navigation as well. Yeah, that's a rarity in today's vehicles. Adaptive cruise control, you can control your media and whatever on the steering wheel too push button start and very clear cluster and the thing about a pickup is it has to be robust which means lots of hard plastics lots of storage points as well and a handy 12 volt socket up here what's the four before well two-wheel drive four high and then you push it in to activate four low you can go into four high on the fly as well very handy also has trailer sway assist and vehicle dynamic control too. And this is where you operate your descent control. You've even got air conditioning in here. Airbags throughout as well. Nice and easy to get in the back. The raised ride height really helps, as does the step, because it reaches the full length of the doors. Perfect. Door opens nice and wide. And yeah, that floor is raised, but I'll talk about that in a second. Climbing in, because of that raised floor, you can see I'm sat more like this, so my knees are further up than they would be. Foot room, but I suppose the only way to solve it is to have the seat a little further forward in the front. Headroom, if I sit like this, it won't brush. But if I move around a bit and like jostle, then I will keep catching my hair. You're definitely higher in the back, you really are, because I can actually see over the headrest. Vents in the center, no plugs. You've got USBs in the front as well. There's even an auxiliary port in case you're running the old school auxiliary cable. More hard plastics, but they're lightened up nicely with this matte silvery type finish. The lucky window and a decent door pocket. And look, a grab handle, which makes it far easier to get in. And look, a grab handle. So get this, two here, but none on the driver's side. It's comfortable, it's functional, and it's practical. I've got to be careful what I say here, because I'm sure I said something about the pickup being the perfect family vehicle. But with the way the government's gone with fueling, maybe not now. I did touch on the bed before, but in all honesty, what can you say about it? You can modify it, I suppose. You can put things like the bed liner in, you can get sports bar and all types of things. And it would have been nice to see, like I mentioned, a soft tailgate. But this is nice and strong and I can sit here and do sit-ups and all types of things. It would have been nice to have some lights on the bed, but in all honesty, it's got everything it needs. It even has some pretty sturdy tethering hooks at the bottom as well as this system. And you can get a roller top cover, truckman top, and all types of things. Also got a high level brake light and a bee sting. And this, because it's got the plastic on, it's perfect for resting things like hay bales, dogs, trees. And the one thing that you need on a pickup is parking sensors, but you don't just get parking sensors, you get a 360 reversing camera as well. 
As this is the end guard, we get 18 inch black alloy wheels, black and blue end guard side decals, black front grille, black rear step bumper and under bumper rail, black roof rails and black side steps. We've also got gloss black door handles, gloss black door mirrors. We've got mud guards. And yes, this does have LED lights and we've got a black inlay with that as well. Now you might expect this to have leaf springs on the back, but it hasn't. It's actually got five link with stabilizer. And on the front, double wishbone with stabiliser. Engine torque is an unbelievable 450 newton meters. No wonder it pulls like a train. All models are now fitted with multi-link rear suspension with coil springs. This gives it more car-like qualities, meaning it feels more short-footed. It also raises the rear by 25 millimeters. Now here's some specs that you'd like to know when you're off-roading. For example, the approach angle's 31 degrees, the departure angle's 27 degrees, and breakover angle 23. Minimum ground clearance is 223 mil. Now the one thing you want to know about these is what its wading depth is. Well on this it's 600 mil. They've also fitted better brakes and they've revised the front suspension as well and to keep it safe across all the range, all models have trailer sway assist. Actually it would be quite interesting to see what it would feel like to bring like a sheep trailer up here. It's a lot better maintained than it used to be. It's also got increased torque and you can get a six speed manual with lower ratios see, and short shift. Bobbly, but this it? box is just as capable off road. The new box may be a bit more economical though. This is a very big pickup there. Yes. Look at that. Oh yes. How I missed this. Oh, you just love it. Oops, mirror. Splish, splash, wee No problem for this. It just does it so easily. 